From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. Once again, we are going to deal with some headlines that are very startling. And uh, we know that the Lord has the answer for all of them found in the Word of God. The first one, Iranian general warns of bio-warfare. Oh, how serious is that? And 170,000 rockets and missiles threaten Israel. You know that little land. Why does anyone want to do that? And then going on, Christian persecution? No. Annihilation. In other words, they're talking about completely doing away with Christianity in some areas of the world. But before we get into all that serious uh, business, we're going to be talking about something that Jack mentioned to me ahead of time here. By the way, when I was a little girl, and when you were little, do you remember when you went to Sunday school, your mom and dad always gave you something to put in the offering plate? Mine always did. Well, Jack was telling me about a little boy whose mom gave him something to put in the offering plate. She said, son, here we have two nickels. The one is to put in the offering plate, and the other is to buy an ice cream cone on the way home. Oh, thank you, mommy. And he's starting to go toward the church, and he slips on the ice, and the nickel rolls into the sewer. And he said, sorry, Lord, there goes your nickel. Oh. <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, oh, that's boy. cute, These Jack. little guys are cute, believe me. There are a lot of Christians who do that with the Lord's basket on Sundays, too, as little as they can, believe me. I hope when he got to Sunday school, his Sunday school teacher thought, taught him better than yeah. that. You know, friends, we are going to be dealing with some very serious things today. This first one, I think, is very relevant to our thinking about where our president stands today. You know, President Obama has said that he is a Christian, but his verbiage is questioned by some because of his responses to different situations. Take a look. The Reverend Franklin Graham, of course that is Dr. Billy Graham's son, on a recent session of Morning Joe commented on Obama. He has said he's a Christian, so I just have to assume he is. This remark generated scare headlines. Franklin Graham questions Obama's Christian faith. But Graham is not alone in his doubts. I'm going to stop there for just a moment. I'm going to ask Jack, uh, Jack, how do you feel about this? You know, the, the president has said that he's a Christian, but some of the things he's done hasn't really made people feel that way. Well, Jesus said in Matthew 7, 15, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. And he went on to say, By their fruit you'll know them, and I happen to be a fruit inspector for the Lord. <laughs> Amen. No, I don't believe in his Christianity for a minute. 50% of the evangelicals are in the same boat right now because Obama in the Chicago Sun-Times said, there are many ways to heaven. It's not just Jesus alone. And these evangelicals are saying it, and I'm telling you, anyone who says it is as lost as the devil himself. Wow. Why? Because 400 times this book says Jesus is the way, and the only way. And 700 times it's through the shedding of his blood. That's 1,100 verses. And Obama, you deny much of this when you say there are many ways to heaven. And all you evangelicals, now... Here's the Bible. Jesus, John 3, 36. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath, the wrath of God abides on him. Jesus says in John 8, 24, you die in your sins if you don't believe on me and I'm the Savior of the world, according to 1 John 4, 14. And again, in John 14, 6, I, Jesus, am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no woman can come unto the Father but by me. 400 times that's in our Bible. Luke says in Acts 4, 12, neither is there salvation in any other. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. No other name, no other name. 
that's good enough for me. Don't tell us about our God being Allah and we all have the same God. That is not what this Bible says. That's the first commandment which says, have no other gods before me. I believe God. How about you, Romans 3, 4? Mm. Now, let me go on a little further. What is the gospel? Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 1, I declare unto you the gospel. Verses 3 and 4, that Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. The death, burial, and resurrection is that bringing out a series starting two weeks from now on the enemies of the cross of Christ. And America's full of them. They know the language. They profess that they know me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, Luke 16, 15. You are they which justify yourselves before men by what you say. God knows your heart. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient unto every good work, reprobate, counterfeit. Titus 1, 16. All right, let's go just a little farther then. Galatians 1.8, the Apostle Paul, by the Holy Spirit, though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel to you than the death, burial, and resurrection, let him be accursed. And look it up in Webster's Dictionary. Accursed means damned doomed and burn in the fire. And I'm going to be having a lot to say about our Pope in a few minutes from now, the present one. And ladies and gentlemen, when he says, all you atheists are going to be in heaven, I'll meet you. You don't need Jesus anymore. Just follow your conscience. But the conscience can become defiled. Titus 1.15. We are in trouble, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to document everything I say today with quotes from Roman Catholic leaders who are very concerned. And I'm getting mail from all over the country saying, thank you. We are afraid of what's going on. Oh, but 80%, 88% of the people favor me. Yeah, the ones who are liberal journalists, the people of the world who love their sin. We're going to be saying a lot, believe me. You can't get away with these things, Rick. So let's go on. All right, we will. Now, this next headline really uh, surprised me, and I wonder if it's really the government's position is a little bit inconsistent here. Government bans calling terrorists jihadists. Can you believe that one? And look at this. Obama Homeland Security official. U.S. is an Islamic country. My, I can't believe these headlines. Then let's take a look at this next one, the New Authoritarians. Uh, Jack, would you like to read that from World Magazine, please? Oh, listen, ladies and gentlemen, because these are four terrorist organizations who have a lot to say in the White House. Abdullah says that months into the Arab Spring, he and other Egyptian freedom fighters realize that the Western powers in the Obama administration have put their support behind the New Authoritarians. Through their proxies in the United States, the Muslim Brotherhood, the Islamic Nahda of Tunisia, the Justice Party of Morocco, and the Islamist militias in Libya's Transitional National Council systematically received U.S. financial support, folks, writes Abdullah. This block of regimes and organizations is now becoming the greatest Islamist radical lobby ever to penetrate and infiltrate the White House Congress, the State Department, and the main decision-making centers of the United States government. Forgive us, Lord. Mm, that is shocking, Jack. Have you noticed what's going on in Europe? My, in fact, the Muslims say they're going to take over Europe in the very near future. Take a look. This is nothing new for them. As early as 1989, Europeans were shocked to see thousands of Muslims openly protest in the streets of Britain, France, Germany, Belgium, and the Netherlands, carrying signs with a provocative slogan, Islam, our religion today, your religion tomorrow. And jihadist leader to the United States, Islam is coming. And the general, U.S. Christians targeted for murder. Well, look at this next one. Christian persecution? No, annihilation. And, you know, we are told that the most hated religion in the world right now is Christianity. I couldn't believe that, Jack, when you told me that just the other day. It shocked me. Rexella, I will never burn one of your Korans, nor will I put you down Allah or Muhammad. 
but I will quote what you've written against my Jesus. And I have to sit there and smile as he's blasphemed. And we've got journalists right here on television in our area who say, what's wrong with you Christians? They love Jesus as much as you do. He's their prophet. But you don't understand the language. A lady the other day said, a Muslim drove me to work and he said, hey, we believe in Jesus like you. No, they don't. No, I trust you'll be lenient with me. But you can take my Bible and you can tear my Jesus to shreds and I have to sit there and say nothing. But I'm going to speak up for my Jesus. All right? What do you teach? And I have spent time now memorizing 300 verses of the surahs of your Quran. So this is from the Quran. Now listen carefully. Jesus returns as the prophet. He says, I am not a deity. I am not God. I am not the son of God. I did not die on a cross. I rigged it all. And since I left, I've become a Muslim. I've converted. And so I'm coming back to earth as the evangelist for Allah. And it is my job to smash every cross. And according to Kabani, the head Muslim cleric of America, it is the job of Jesus under Mahdi, their Messiah, to put to death every Jew and Christian who will not convert. Who puts them to death? Jesus! Now, come on, Van Ippie, you're going too far. Oh, am I? Let me give you again what the Quran says. Chapter 4, verses 157 to 59. Verses 172 and 73. Chapter 4. 5, verses 72 and 73, chapter 6, verse 19, chapter 9, verse 30, and chapter 19, verse 33 and 88. Come on now, be fair with our Bible and our Jesus, and don't you folks ever listen to these guys on television, the journalists who don't know anything about the Bible and say they love Jesus as much as he do. I promised my God I would tell this to the world once a month as long as I live. That's what is taught about my Jesus. And I tell you, when Pope Francis gets up there and says, we are all brothers and sisters as Muslims and Christians. No, we're not. Why? John 1, 12, as many as received Jesus, to them gave God the power to become sons and daughters. You've got to be a son and daughter to be brothers and sisters. And you can only become a son or daughter if you receive Jesus and the Muslims aren't doing it. Plus, Galatians 3, 26, you're all the children of God. Yeah, you may quote that one, Pope Francis, but I won't. You're all the children of God. Finish the verse by faith in Christ Jesus. Folks, let's not be blinded. I'll tell you, I got a book that I'm going to advertise later, and I haven't said a thing about it. The three popes, every quotation from Francis of Assisi, Bishop Sheen, Pope John Paul II, Pope Benedict XVI, and Malachi Martin, the great Jesuit, who wrote many books against them because he was the Jesuit, the instructor at the Vatican, and said, I can no longer be a communist Christian priest. And he's written many books. And Simon and Schuster said, well, let you use all of his quotes. Boy, you need it, and you'll know what's really going on. Oh, yes, Jack, yeah. wonderful book. Now I want to say that, oh, the past 12 months have featured unrelenting coverage of this new pope. Have you noticed? Unrelenting. And uh, I want you just to see some questions concerning him. Pope Francis shakes up the Vatican. And the first year, Pope Francis opened arms to change. All right. Now, my fellow Catholics should be suspicious when bastions of anti-Catholicism in the left-wing media are in love with him. Pope Francis is bidding a retreat for the Catholic Church and making sure its controversial doctrines are whispered, not oh, yelled. Oh, stop That's for a minute, Adam Rexella. Shaw, mm -hmm. Yeah, doctrines. That's what he's saying. Be careful of these doctrines that bring disillusionment. Listen, for 2,000 years, the Roman Catholic Church has stood on the Word of God, and many of the popes have spoken ex cathedra. That means under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. This man, if he speaks, better be under ex cathedra because what he's saying denies what so many good popes have said. Now, I don't want people to misunderstand me because I had great love for Pope John Paul II and Pope Benedict XVI. They stuck with God's word. But this man I'm afraid of, and Catholics are writing me saying, we're afraid of what may come soon. He talks about, oh, rules. Wait a minute. 
Nothing wrong with rules. We've got the Ten Commandments, not suggestions, commandments. In Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 to 17, among them, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear a false witness lie, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, his wife, or his possessions. Boy, the churches and Protestants, all of them, are filled with all of this corruption. Let's get back to God's rule. Amen. And he says, some of these prophecies bring disillusionment. Be careful. Wait a minute. God wrote this book so that we might know what doctrine is all about. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for correction and righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Listen to 2 Timothy 4, verses 2 to 4. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears and hearts from the truth. From the truth. And you know what popped in my head just now? Thy word is truth. We need to trust the Bible. Oh, if ever we needed the Bible, the Word of God, we need it today. Now, a few moments ago, Jack mentioned Malachi Martin. And certainly he was an important figure in the Vatican, Jack. And uh, I'd like for you to read if you, uh, something that he has written here, if you would, please. I think it's very, very oh, significant. Oh, this is moving. I'm going to go slowly. He's talking about a time when Pope 113, according to the Catholic prophecy, comes to power. And that is this Pope and says, at that time, Roman Catholics will then have the spectacle of a Pope validly elected who cuts the entire visible body of the church loose from the traditional unity and the papacy-oriented apostolic structure that the church has hitherto always believed and taught was divinely established. The shudder that will shake the Roman Catholic body in that day will be the shudder of its death and agony, for its pains will be from within, itself orchestrated by its leaders and its members. No outside enemy will have brought this about. Many will accept the new regime. Many will resist. All will be fragmented. There will be no one on earth to hold the fractioning members of the visible Roman Catholic body together as a living compact organization. Men will then be able to ask for the first time, get it, the first time in the history of the church, where is the visible body of the church Christ founded? But there will be none. Oh, that even breaks my heart. Mm. Oh, Jack, it's so wonderful to know that we don't have to go along with all that. But we can be a member of the body of Christ if we've accepted the Lord. We're a member of the body of Christ. And we don't have to rely on any man except Jesus Christ, our Savior, the only way to heaven. Now, I'm going to go on here with something that this Pope said that really, really shocked me. Pope Francis suggests atheists, good deeds, get them to heaven. Now, this sparked a religious debate, believe me, with comments and uh, from inside the Vatican. They were really shaken up by this. And Jack, atheists, if they don't believe in God, they cannot go to heaven according to the Bible. Psalm 14, 1 and chapter 53, verse 1, the fool that said in his heart, there is no God. They are abominable. They have done wicked deeds. Thank you, God, Holy Spirit of God. Mm, and you know what? I'm going to give you something now also. It's from a very strong Catholic magazine, the New Oxford Review, the Catholic Muslim Faith Alliance by William Kilpatrick. Has the church in the United States succumbed to the charms of Islam? This next one, Pope, authentic Islam opposes violence. Oh, Jack has addressed that already in their Quran. That's uh, the opposite. And then from the Wall Street Journal, priest use of Allah brings Malaysia sedition probe. Read this next one with me, if you will. Malaysia court rules, non-Muslims cannot use Allah. 
Now here, some of our ministers are saying, doesn't matter, you can say Allah for God, but over there, don't you dare say Allah is your God unless you are a Muslim. Wow, Jack, that is just the opposite. Let's take on the Protestants first. Rick Warren and Robert Schuller of the Old Crystal Cathedral both signed the Yale Covenant called the Common Word thing. And it says, we apologize for what our people did to the Muslims during the Crusades. Secondly, we agree that the name of God is Allah. And Rick Warren has not taken his name off that list yet. By the way, there are 300 Christian leaders, most of them Protestants, and our school leaders, presidents, and the rest, who've signed us that our God is now Allah. Thank God for Malaysia, where they just had these pilots and all the trouble that's happened. In Malaysia, they have just sued the Catholic Church, say, do not desecrate the name of our God, Allah, by using him as the name of your God. They have more sense than you guys in our Protestant and Catholic movement, even Cardinal Dolan, who just preached at a Muslim conference like Rick Warren does twice. And he said, now get it, we, you believe in God, and we Catholics believe in God, but we both believe in the same God. No, we don't. And Wycliffe Bible Translator, Sills and Frontiers, you talk about kind promises, the greatest men of God for years, like the Jesuits were, has also defected. And they've now removed 91 times out of the Bible that Jesus is the Son of God. Brother, hell's not going to be hot enough for some of these Christian defectors. Mm, you know what, Jack? I just want him to quickly name something for me. And in this next packet, I think you're going to see how all four of them are accumulated. Uh, first of all, the, the book of Revelation talks about four horsemen that are going to ride. They represent something right before the coming of the Lord. Jack, what are those well, four Well, the horsemen? shocking thing is the Catholic prophecy says that this pope, 113 from Celestine II, will be the one that rules during Armageddon. And that's when the four horsemen ride. Get ready, folks. Jesus is about to return. The one in the white horse is the infamous Antichrist who brings in a peace contract, and that's uh, Daniel chapter 11, verses 21 and 24, along with the Pope. Secondly, there's the rider on the red horse. That is red Russia, for when the peace has been made, and it could be Putin now of Russia, says, get this now, Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 11, I will go against them that are at rest, they're at peace. The third rider is on a black horse and all the war has brought hunger and starvation on the people and the rider on the fourth horse sees one third of the population of the earth dying through the hunger and the beasts of the field viruses diseases rexella back that up all right certainly am we're going to go on here with that second horse the war horse because you know certainly the president is trying to bring that peace to the world but look what's happening i think we're going to see war here russian president chinese president and they're talking very friendly china and russia conduct joint naval drill russian support of assad up ends peace talks egypt and russia hold historic talks russia putin to visit tehran for nuclear talks and intel hit 170,000 rockets and missiles threaten Israel. Now, do you see the war shaping up there? The red horse, here's the black horse. Hunger, I am hungry. Help me. That's Syria. children, yes. Here they are again. My heart just breaks when I see them. Displaced Syrians, oh, they have nothing to eat. They're reaching. And here are some is trying to escape. There's nothing for them to eat. Famine, famine, the black horse. And here we have disease. And that is a pale horse, the killer Spanish flu. Could it happen again? West Nile virus threat growing. And here again, TB drug shortages. Plague India, U.S. threatening progress. And Iranian general warns of bio warfare. Oh, that's a horrible disease thing. Vial of deadly virus missing at Texas bioterror laboratory. Jack, there's the disease. That's the four horsemen of the apocalypse. That's all Revelation chapter 6 and the horsemen are about to ride and we call it the four horsemen of the apocalypse because that is what the Roman Catholic Church calls the book of Revelation. The four horsemen of the apocalypse. And this Pope, 
reigns according to Catholic prophecy 874 years old, which was set in 1139 by St. Malachi, and lo and behold, we've lived to see it. Jesus is about to come. We're the generation. You know, we are the generation. A church can't get you to heaven. Nothing can get you to heaven except accepting Jesus as your Savior. He's the Son of God. He died for you. Will you open your heart to him? Jack, will you pray that prayer? God the Father said, if you receive my son, you become my son and daughter. Do it right now. Jesus, only Savior, only way. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for shedding that blood to wash me, cleanse me, and save me. Now, I accept what you did for me. Come into my heart now, Jesus, today. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? There's my address. Write to me if you did. I'd love to send you this little booklet. First steps in a new direction. How good to be forgiven of that old direction. He'll walk with you every day. And now, friends, here's our wonderful offer of the week, The Final Three Popes, Jack's wonderful book. Jack? It's loaded with quotes from the greatest Catholic leaders in the world. Get it. Here are the chapters. One, the anti-communist pope. Two, liberation theology. Three, the great apostasy. Four, the one world government and global world religion. Five, two popes, Pope John Paul and Gregory XVI. Six, Pope Francis, Armageddon, and Christ Return. Seven, Pope Francis, the final pope. Uh, eight, the global collision with the Jesuits. Nine, Pope Francis and the Vatican and Gay Lobby. Ten, Pope Francis compromises with atheists and Muslims. Get it. And now, friends, I'm going to ask our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. You need to order it right away. So here's Chuck Oman. Chuck? To order your copy of the book, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of 1995 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan 48007. In Canada, send your donation of 1995 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, friend, Rexella. Thank you so much, Chuck, and you'll certainly be enlightened as you read this book, so do not put it off. On, uh, there's the 800 number, and there's the address, so please make the call. We'll get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. This is a book that really enlightens your mind as to every place we're at right now. The coming of the Lord is so near, and we need to be ready, don't we? Make the call. You know, I really, really believe this saying with all of my heart, and I trust you'll take it to your heart. A well-read Bible, oh, we've been talking about the Bible today, is a sign of a well-fed soul. Oh, read the Bible every day. We'll look forward to being your home again next week. Until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.